안녕하세요. I am Mao. I'm Justin. And we are MJ. MJ. 사랑해요. Well, the last broadcast today, Mao. No? You just revealed the biggest secret ever. It is our <laughs> last time to have this live streaming. Yeah, well, it's a bit shame. It's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. Exactly. Well, yeah, but hopefully the COVID-19 will get done soon. Yeah. Or we'll get back to our real traveling someday. Exactly. And I also wish that we can have more live streaming tours in the future. If I can have this chance to work with our most yeah. professional guy, oh. Justin, right? <laughs> nah, I look forward to it too. And I'm pretty sure Mao can be a very optimistic Uh, tour guide in the future Thank someday. You. I really nobody knows. I really learned a lot from this live streaming video oh. because of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, sorry. I, I think I gave him too much before we yeah, started this exactly. broadcast. Well, yeah. let's move on to. But anyway, Mao, um, how have you been doing? Uh, you know, the, the pandemic, uh, things are getting worse in the worldwide. Yeah, to be honest, I'm doing my job search recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. So because of COVID, it's a bit hard to have some international jobs if you want yeah, to relocate. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. You can exactly. travel a lot. How about you? What are you doing recently? Well, I'm also doing my jobs, but I'm not changing my jobs. It's just you know. I'm I still... guess. <laughs> I heard that you are the writer of webtoon, right? I'm I'm drawing uh, some comics. Oh. That nobody reads, but I'm I'm enjoying it. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to introduce a bit? about your comic books like only the title maybe the audiences can go and take a look well actually uh, they're not even going to find out that uh, webtoon story I'm talking about oh, is it? it's not really enlisted but one thing I want to share is it's going to be about uh, the treasures of, in Korea Oh, you know like the national treasures and some tourist information thing okay you know something like that one that's really good since you're mentioning about the information what's that happening behind us Well, well, what's happening? Oh, so that oh, shit. they're doing something. <laughs> Is that the zip line or parachute? Well, I think we call that action uh, the the paragliding. Ah, uh, paragliding. Oh, zip lining. You your zip line has to be connected to the top notch. And oh, exactly. You are actually traveling across the mountains, but you're not flying. Mm. But the paragliding, you're actually going to fly. Exactly. With uh, the Guardian. Ooh, with the Guardian, okay. <laughs> That's really good. So today we are going to talk about a place called Munkyong, right? You said it properly, yes. Yeah, Munkyong. What does Munkyong mean? Well, I think that would be very interesting history to talk about. Okay, we are waiting for you, Justin. <laughs> Firstly, um, you, you know what that Chinese word means, Munkyong. Wenqing. Wenqing, the wen. Yeah. Well, do you know what that means? I think I know it. Actually, in Chinese, we would say moon is mm-hmm. something I smell, but also it can be described as listening. Oh, right. Yeah, so I think here is for listening, and qin means to celebrate something. So, which means you are listening to something that you can celebrate. Yes, so you're going to hear very good news. Oh. That's what mungyong means. Oh. But what kind of news they're going to talk about here? I think that is the point of this conversation here. Exactly. So let's go back to um, like Joseon Dynasty era. Okay. You know, 1392, 1910. Just say you're living in southern part of Korea. Okay, southern part of Korea. Like Busan, your favorite city. Yeah, exactly. Or or Gyeongju, you know, Andong, uh, the the place we've been to through the online tour. Um, At that time, And, and you, you want to get a good job. Yes. And what kind of job would that be? Was work for the king. The government, yes. Okay. And how do you become a worker for the king? I guess we have to pass some exams, right? Yeah, the civil examinations. And where is that civil e- examination were held? Must be the capital, the Seoul yes. nowadays. Yes, the capital city Seoul. So uh, you had to walk to Seoul back then. Oh yeah, there's no Car, railway, railway, no railway, no no, no plane. Okay. Um. So Mungyong. Yep. Was the path that they had to walk through no matter what. Ah, oh, so it's like here's the south part of Korea. Mm-hmm. This is the capital. Mm-hmm. And there's the high mountain, which means Mungyong. Mungyong, in the between. Yes. Oh. So there's a there's a too many mountains to cross yep. in Mungyong. 
So um, we used to call that path as okay. Mungyong Seje. Mungyong Seje. Unfortunately, yes. there's no Chinese characters, right? Because Seje must be the native Korean word. Exactly. Which means the place where the bird has to rest. Ah. Why? Because the mountain is too high. The bird is flying. Yep. But it's too high. The bird need even the bird needs to place to rest. Oh. Then fly next day. Understand. <laughs> wow. So that's why it's called Seje. Mungyong yes. Seje. Yes. So it's very rough mountain terrain. Yep. And the people who want to be a civil officer, um, they had to rest in Mungyo before they cross that mountain steep. Exactly. And um, they wanted to hear good news in the future. Mm. And that's what they heard. Oh, so that's why the play is called Mungyo, to hear something good related to their exam. Exactly. Oh. So, um, well, as we describe, yep. Mungyo is about 83% mountain terrain exactly. area. Um, it used to be a very, very big city a long time ago. Okay. Uh, not too big as much as Seoul yep. or Taipei. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. Oh, no problem. Well, just um, <laughs> for their understanding. So can we take a look at the map? Let's see how far is it from Seoul? Yeah, so let's have a look at the map of the location of Mungyeong. Um, well, that's, that's how far that is. Um, nowadays, you can drive there less than two to three hours. Oh, that's okay. Acceptable distance. Accept acceptable distance. But um, the KTX train is not straight connected. Ah. You have to take some other slow train. Ah, yeah. Mungungha. Mung 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 yeah, Mungungha or Semaul. Oh, Semaul. Oh. <laughs> uh, you could also get express bus oh. to get to Mungyo. Um, but as you can see the map on there, do you see a little green yeah. color area? Yeah, mountains, right? Mountains. Mm. That's what that uh, terrain looks like. It is surrounded by mountains, and that means it is very nice place to protect your city. Oh. <laughs> surrounded by mountains. Oh, and it's also a really good protection for our capital, Seoul, right? Just in case, if any enemy invade the country from the south, mostly yep. Japan. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> they, they chose that area for their protective area. Ah. Because Japan is like, they have to come to Korea from the southern part. Yes. So they need to come across that mountains. So the armies usually set the base around that place, right? The Mungkyong. Yes. Just, um, you know, they have to land in Busan first. Yep. They have to go, go to north. Exactly. So Mungkyong, if you, once you cross there, you can go to Seoul straight away mm. so it, 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 it was the area that they had to take no matter what mm -hmm. so this idea applied to one of our zombie movie oh the drama series the kingdom train to busan the netflix series oh. no actually it's the kingdom <laughs> oh okay <laughs> train to busan is the modern version <laughs> oh okay sorry i didn't watch it no no it's fine but the kingdom um the zombies spread it started from busan yes and they started to move all the way up to seoul yes so the, the, the government sent defense army and they oh. set the defense line in Mungyong. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> and Sangju, the, the, the same, same area. Oh. So understand. Hey, yeah. yeah, sorry, Justin. No, 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 no. I mean, that's that's how, how many mountains that you would be able to find in Mungyong. That's really good. So I think the reason that we are going to introduce Mungyong is because there must be something different compared to other tourist places, right? Well, yeah, I think so, because firstly, Mungyong was you used to be a place where you used to have coal mines. Mm. But until 1970, the Mungyong has about 150,000 population. Exactly. Uh, but the coal mines were closed in 1980s. Okay. Then they started to have a problem. Oh. Where are all the incomes coming from? So, maybe? No industry. We can take a look from the videos. Well, then, you know, when the coal mines closed, they had to find a tourist area. Oh, exactly. So you could find so much tourist attractions related to your coal industry, mm. uh, if you understand the history of it. Okay, so I think it's a time for us to take a look at the video, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's go. Let's get started. What I have heard is that the special part about Mungkyong is because they provided more outdoor activities compared to other places. Because there are too many mountains? Or because of too many mountains, <laughs> I think so. Have you ever been there? I think so, right? 
Yeah, I've been there um, on the way to our tour. Uh, well, firstly, flying land paragliding. Yeah, but before starting the paragliding, I want to ask, how did you get there? Driving in cars? Uh, driving a car is one of the options. Yep. That's one of the options, that very common options to be recommended. Yes. But there are other options too, monorails. Uh, monorails. But personally, people don't really recommend it if you don't like being slow. Mm, understand. Um, because the monorail actually moves slow. Yes. Roughly about 40 minutes 40 for a one-way trip. Okay. Um, but if you drive up there, it will take less than that. You mean the 40 minutes, which means from the bottom of the mountain to reach the top of the mountain? Yeah. To do the paragliding? One-way trip. Okay, I see. Just 40 minutes trip there. That's pretty long. Yeah. To be honest. Well, but some people might love it, but you are here for paragliding and to enjoy this beautiful scenery. Exactly. And I, re I heard that they provide like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes course regarding well, to the paragliding. Yes. And with your two people experience, you know, and they all have very well experienced guardians <laughs> <laughs> who help you with this paragliding experiences. Wait, is that IU? Yeah, you, you, you know about her too? I only know IU among all of the K-pops. <laughs> oh, she has come here before. So she was here too. She was oh. on her broadcast show. Oh, that's why. Yeah, well, I'm not sure she was doing it with that bear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the teddy bear toy, but um, she was there and that's why this place also became a very attractive place. Mm, I, I totally agree because it made me also want to go there a bit. Oh, well, <laughs> I think you should go there next time. Yeah, exactly. You know? But not sure with IU, but... <laughs> <laughs> if I can have the chance, I want to go with IU. <laughs> well, yeah, and take that monorail, because that'll be oh. 40 minutes straight. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, here comes our characters, right? Yeah, the the, the guy, Joe Stack, comes up. Yeah, exactly. He actually came up, he tried this paragliding, and there's a guardian who kindly explains. Mm. He told me that um, they were safely doing this thing. Oh, uh, yeah, have to, right? They had to. So he, he kind of urged, don't be afraid if you're thinking about participating in this fly, mm. flying land paragliding. And I know that it's like around six years old, they can even join. Six years old? Yeah, according oh. to my information. Are you six years old? <laughs> no, I mean, which means no matter how old you are or how young you are, you can, most of you can enjoy this activity. Once you can persuade your six years old kid, yeah. Why not? Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I wouldn't do it if I was six years old. But oh, okay. there will be some brave six years old. Kids <laughs> yeah. <on. laughs> oh, and they even provided the shoes for you. The yeah, the dress and all that. Mm. You know, um, I think that they are required for their safety and all that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Try to imagine you are wearing a high heel. <laughs> <laughs> What's the high heels for anyway? <laughs> yeah, the high heel, and somehow the high heel just flew away. And whoever he drops, it will be super dangerous weapons. <laughs> oh, shoot. That could be. Well, I, it sounds like you've done it before now. No, I just saw it. <laughs> oh, it looks really professional, isn't it? Well, yeah. I thought Josta was one of the safeguards, the, the lifeguards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But should be nervous. Have you done this before? Well, in the military, but not in the real life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you feel whenever you were kick out from the helicopter yeah well actually <laughs> <laughs> i felt better after i jumped so could you open your eyes whoever being kicking out um actually you had to you have to because you don't know where your landing point is oh <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really important bro hey don't worry because most of those experiences the safety is the priority <laughs> have to be the priority, right? Even for the military training I've gone through. So oh. um, actually, there were wire connected to the bottom line. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> it's not paragliding. Well, it's just it, like another zip line. Kind of, but, but I flew, so uh, you flew. I'll just call that paragliding. Wow, the scenery was so fantastic. So astonishing. It, it, it's not a good place to cross when you are attacking this area. Oh, yeah, you have mentioned before. But the best place to defense mm. the area if you are the defender. Exactly, exactly. So it's pretty interesting that Sangju, 
this region has the birthplace. Yes. Where one of the founder of our kingdom, called later Baekje Dynasty. Okay, got it. I didn't know. Well, but I'm not going to talk too much long history. But yeah. there's one history about him is that um, his father yeah. took him to the mountain when he was farming. Okay. But soon he was kidnapped by a tiger. <gasps> Another tiger. Yeah, but why? Because tiger wanted to feed him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, of course, feeding him, right? <laughs> so that's how he became a king. You know? Oh, okay. That means there were so many tigers here before. Wow. <laughs> But I guess no, not nowadays, right? Ah, uh, are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Or in the zoo. You know, oh. don't worry about it too much. Uh, but through these paragliding experiences, um, it will be the best opportunity to look at the mountains in Mungyeong. Exactly. Whoever you brought your customers over there, did they also enjoy? Depends what kind of oh, customers yeah. they were. Oh, yeah, exactly. If they love adventures, <laughs> like your stuff. Oh, they they're starting. It. Oh my goodness! <sighs> See. Uh, oh no. This looks really cool. Well, a bit, yeah. a bit, yeah, scary. But I think it's pretty worth, right? I think it's worth it. Yeah. If you've done it. Wow. It's just a matter of time that how you think before exactly. you start doing it. But look at that. Yeah, everyone just does it. Yeah, exactly. They just do it. And I think the best part for this experience is that if you know the history, the mm -hmm. story that we just mentioned, you can enjoy that. Oh, so in the past, most people choose here to protect their countries, mm -hmm. and I think it will make this event, this experience, more meaningful. Yeah, let's change it to military training facility. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And finding tiger to feed uh -huh. your baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. And I know that because sometimes it depends on weather. Mm -hmm. It may be canceled. But the weather are, is better. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Josta actually had an experience with it. Exactly. Yeah. So he went up there, uh, but the, he couldn't participate it because the weather circumstances. Yeah, but don't worry. We know that if you come with us, oh yeah, yeah, tour, yeah, you will yeah. be no problem. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tell Tiger to yeah. control the weather. Yeah, control the weather. That's really good. <laughs> Whoa. So as you can see, the view, um, uh, just all alongside it, um, Mungyeong also has the eight sceneries. Oh, the eight sceneries? We call it Paragyeong. Paragyeong. Ba-jin. Ba-jin. Well, doesn't it sound familiar, Mao? Yeah, actually, you just mentioned that because in Taiwan, we also have the eight sceneries, mm -hmm. which are really famous, especially... Actually, this name was named after Japanese people whenever we were having the Japanese colon, colon, colonization. Uh, exactly. How about you? You have this term also back to Jap Japanese period? Just like a similar history in Taiwan, oh. we also named... Um, the eight sceneries in each location in the cities oh. where they have a beautiful scenery mm. um, also influenced from this Japanese rule so this is one way which one? Uh, I mean the scenery that we are seeing now is this also part of the eight sceneries? well um, I think eight scenery I think I can see it from there but okay. um, you guys are never going to find out oh yeah exactly. <laughs> I think it's better to find out with your own eyes mm. when you actually get a chance to travel to Mungyeong someday okay. in the future I also know that in Seoul we also have eight sceneries alright, yeah. you are a traveler yeah, exactly what, what is the one of the eight sceneries in Seoul? actually, there is one place called Pukchong ah, uh, yeah. and I remember only Pukchong they have eight sceneries over there only around Pukchong there, is eight, there are eight sceneries over there Well, it is the most well-known uh, Hanok village area in Seoul, where you can see the scenery of Hanok. And people who get tired with the noise made from like tourists. Before the COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Nowadays, I can find anyone. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I went there last time, and there's a grandma working there saying, uh, I kind of miss those noisy tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people actually who yeah. control. Uh, people not to be too noisy. Yeah, exactly. So maybe next time if you visit Bukchong or anywhere, just try to respect the locals over there. And yeah. you can have better experience in my opinion. 
All right, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we want to recommend, finding the eight sceneries in each place. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And like I said, Mungyong has also the eight sceneries. eight sceneries. Yes, in Korean, it's called Pargyong. In Chinese, it's called Bajin. <laughs> Japanese? Hake <laughs> des. Okay, well, that's a good translator job. Uh, uh, no worry, bro. <laughs> wow. I didn't. Oh, yeah. If I really have the chance, I really want to experience this paragliding. Yeah. Um, well, I thought I was going to be scared. Yeah, but there's a, how to say, the safeguard yeah. behind, behind you, you, right? Yeah. Are you looking for a lady? Well, I guess most of the time the safeguard would be <laughs> the uncle. <laughs> yeah, really but good. yeah, you know, it's a bit shameful, but I think it's mostly the male uh, safeguard. <laughs> I guess some of our audience may be curious why do we put mosaic on it, right? Because they were not authorized. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> they, we didn't get their copyright, sorry. I, I heard this video clip was actually taken. Yes. By those safeguards. Oh! Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How could you take the things we just saw it, right? From upper side. Yes, so he was doing it with his camera under the safe mm. instructions, the proper safe instruction. Mm. And obviously, the man with him yes. was just a random tourist. Oh, I see. <laughs> and there's one thing if you want to experience this paragliding, that is actually you cannot use your own self stick. The how to say, the safeguards they will provide their own self sticks for you. This is what I learned from other live streaming videos. Oh, you're smart. Thank you. So you're going to leak this story before everyone gets there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's no, that's smarty. I think Mao will be a tour guide in the future. Yeah, in, in Korea. In Korea. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Twenty years later. <laughs> Ask Chosta. He, he, I think he had the yeah, tour guide experience. Already. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's really good if you want to experience rather than some indoors activities or just some sightseeing. I mm -hmm. think sometimes doing some exciting outdoors activities would be the plus point. Yeah, especially in nowadays atmosphere where you cannot go outside yeah. often. You have to stay indoors all the yes. time. You know, this will be a great opportunity to you, make your feeling turn. You need to have something to excite you, right? Exactly. The exciting turning point. I'm not sure about the monorail. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still good if you are here with your babies or with your grandparents. Oh yeah. Who wouldn't like to try the paragliding? Yeah. Monorail would be one of the best options to try. To enjoy the scenery. Yeah. You actually can try the round trip too. Not only the one way, so... <laughs> 80 minutes in total. Oh, well, yeah. Um, well, if anyone who likes to take that monorail with your future girlfriend, why not? <laughs> I think, yeah, that's one of the options. Yeah, well... So, until today, how many people still living here? Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit surprising. Yep. When there were coal mines back in 1970. Exactly. There, there used to be about 150,000. 150,000. Wow, quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, compared to other countryside back then. But nowadays, 70,000. 7,000 only? 70,000. Oh, 70,000. Wow. Less than half, right? Yeah, less than half. Mm. I think there's no choice because young generation tend to move to big cities like here, Seoul. Yeah, well, the cities are just pulling their jobs. You know, mm. um, so most of the people who are left are, are, are farmers. Ah, the farmers. Or, or doing some tourism industry like here. Exactly. I think maybe most of the business they do mm -hmm. in Munkyong would be this kind of outdoors activity experiences. Yeah. But in other words, it's a good place to experience the nature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you love the Korean history drama or the kingdom, oh. like the zombie one. Yes. Their film locations are actually in Mungyeong. Mm. It's a big film shooting location. Mm. And as a personal historian fan, um, I, I love going there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not until you mentioned that besides outdoors activities, we still have some film shooting places. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. There are many other interesting places to visit. 
exactly. I think wow. Is that a parking lot? Um, well, um, it depends on the car you're driving. Yeah. If you're driving a little mini car that my little niece drives. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> wow. But um, there is also a place where you can experience the Munyong <laughs> Seje Path. Do you remember the name of this path? No, for this path. Uh, I think we talked about this path on the first scene. Munyong Seje Path. Okay, the place where they can take a rest. All right, and the bird. Oh, the bird. The place where the bird has to rest. Mm. I heard there is a there is a passage where oh. you can actually walk Munyong Seje Path. Walk. So, hey, Justin, whenever you are having this tour with your customers. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, what kind of schedules they experience? Okay, I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to define like one single vision. Yeah. Because it really depends what type of tourists I'm exactly. um, taking care of. I normally handle the people from the Western side, you know, yeah. uh, the North America, the Europeans. Um, they're, they're lazy, firstly. <laughs> oh, they're lazy, okay. I think they prefer the monorail. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Rather than driving in cars within 10 minutes? I'm talking about just typical tourists. Okay, typical tourists. Yeah. Okay. But um, there are some young tourists who want to be adventurous. Yes. They would prefer this 100%. Okay, so what you mean is most of the tourists from Western, they don't really do the paragliding? Well, you know, um, most of their countries, uh, the place from the, uh, that region, they are senior. Yes. Ah. They want to travel the entire Asia for like ah. spending two months or one month. Okay. So they, they don't want to do harsh work <laughs> like this zip line. Oh, so most of the time they <laughs> prefer to enjoy the scenery, the history, the culture about Asian countries. Yes, but they don't want to do hard experience. Mm, I so, understand. So, but um, if you are not that type of tourist, um, <laughs> And if you want to experience that Munyong Seje Pad I mentioned, yeah. the zip line will show us very nice example Ooh. of experiencing Munyong Mountains. Oh, that's really good. Which is has its own historical reputation. Oh, is it? What kind of historical? Munyong Seje Pad. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, whenever you're doing a zip line, it's like you are walking through the pad as well. But this time you're doing zip line, so you don't have to walk. Oh yeah, exactly. It'll be better if you don't like walking too much. Mm, actually, I really like zip line. I think it's much better. I don't know. I mean, it's much safer compared to the get paraglide paragliding. Well, I'm not sure uh, because even the zip line can be cut down. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's no life. There's no safeguard behind you, right? Whenever you are doing a zip line. Yeah, but there are still safe machines yeah exactly that that makes you safe and, and yeah and we know that they provide nine courses within this zip line right yes so from one to nine and the one is like the easiest of course that you could have okay. done and as the number goes higher the course gets tougher yeah and the uh, zip line the courses that we chose within this video was number eight and number nine courses which, which means will the toughest course. The toughest. But <laughs> it wasn't done by us. It was done by just <laughs> I'm pretty sure he'll provide us very nice scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Going through the zip line. Yeah, try to imagine that you have to, your one, one of your hand have to hold the zip line. The other hand have to hold a self stick. Oh, right. That's pretty hard in my opinion. Honestly, I have done zip lining in other place in Kimcheon. And for your military service as well? Uh, that wasn't the military experience. Oh, okay. That was uh, one of our fan tour with our Turbo Industries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and this part, I need to mention. Sorry, Justin. No, that's all right. As you can see, actually, the lesson are all conducted in Korean. So if you join our tour, we can have Chinese speaker tour guide to introduce for you. That's and not me. Yeah. Maybe just that. And I think <laughs> no matter it's in Chinese or English, you don't need to worry. We can explain the rules for you. And I think that's also one of the important things that you join by our tour. Well, obviously. And, you know, it's about the matter of safety. You're going to understand it. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's doing it all right? So as you can see, actually, um, you wouldn't feel 
it's going to be too shaky. Yeah, exactly. It's that pretty stable, isn't it? It's very stable, honestly. Ooh. Have you have done it before, but in other places? Other places, but other places are much much tougher. Oh, it was much higher location. Exactly. And it was a lake. And the wind was very strong. But wow. Mungyeong zip line, the wind isn't too strong because it's surrounded by mountains and mm. trees. Oh yeah, exactly. And but you still can enjoy the scene of the Mungyeong and Mungyeong Seje area. I definitely need to go because it's more stable than I thought. Yeah. You see, even just uh, he doesn't shake at all. Well, it wouldn't shake because zip line. The wire itself is very thick. Mm. It makes everything stable. That I see. Wow. I guess this is the number nine courses. I think so. The the hardest, the toughest course that you could ever do. Yeah. So do you still remember how long is it? Well, three hundred forty meters roughly. The, oh. the, the, the this course only. Okay. Yeah, I heard that it only took you around one to two minutes to yes. finish it. But I heard, <laughs> other than that, they also conduct other things like um, some games. Oh yeah. When they were giving instructions, not to make it so boring. Yeah, exactly. So they kind of make the zip line experience as entertainment. Mm, he really excited me. Wow. So you're really going to do this? I think I have to do it, and I wish there would be also a drone for me to record <laughs> my faces. You see, wow, so good. We have to call that guy, the photographer. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> I was wondering how can she do this? Oh, I think you're going to like this photo. No. Oh yeah, this one <laughs> without a boy. Okay, good. They they look happy. She looks happy. Yeah, exactly. that makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah, as you can see, it looks really stable. Yeah. See, I can I can tell you that. Mm. So don't be scared. Uh, zip lining, it's not going to be too scary. Yeah, zip line Munkyong. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So, how do you say zip lining in Mandarin? Chinese? I think it should be lan xian. Uh -huh. Lan xian. Lan xian. Okay. Yeah, lan xian. In Korean, it's simple. Zip line. Yeah, I just translated it from <laughs> the English, right? Yeah, yeah. They just use the read that word out. Mm. Wow. So hopefully, you're going to hear some good news when you're doing the zip line. Oh, like. Like Mungyo. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think if you try both the uh, activities, the first one, the paragliding, it provides you with the, an overview of Mungyo, and if you try the zip line after the paragliding, it provides you detailed scenery, right? Of the mountains. Yeah. And hopefully you're gonna hear some good news as well. Yeah, exactly. What kind of good news? Like the like the meaning of the city. Oh yeah. To hear some ah okay I get it sorry it's a bit tough to get your point sorry I'm I'm, I'm too sophisticated yeah no worry <laughs> to listen good news which means Munkyong right yeah um, I think Mao was telling me I'm too old uh, no, you're not too old you're still young bro okay well don't worry generation gap is enough <laughs> yeah no worry yeah we can still have much longer lives so don't worry oh wait 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 oh do you know what Omija is? Over there, right? Omija. No, actually, <laughs> no, but in Chinese it's Wei Cha, five flavors tea. Oh, do you have it in Taiwan as well? No, I, I didn't have it in Taiwan. It's not until I came to Korea that I tried Omija. So, what kind of flavor is it? Like you said, it's named as five flavor, but um, they don't have it in other countries too. Oh, only in Korea? So we normally name it in English as Korean Skisandra. Okay. Yeah, but most people don't know what that is. Exactly, I don't know as well. So let me just explain it. It's like a Korean berry. The berry, okay. You know, okay. like berries. It's colored. Could be sour. Could be sour. Sweet. But could, could be flavored. Five flavors. Oh, five flavors. May I ask you? What? What kind of five flavors is it? Don't worry, there's no spicy flavor. Oh, there's no spicy flavor. <laughs> okay, that's really good, that's really good. But the word five, it's not just a five flavor. Oh, sometimes they use this word five as a very good explanation ah. or a good expression. It's like the best form. Or to represent many flavors. Something like that. Mm. You know, so it, it, it could be more than five flavor. It could be less than five flavor. Yeah. They just wanted to use that word to represent oh. it. 
So why do we need to enter this tunnel? Because Omija was planted inside? No, right? Well, Omija, you still have to remember the history of the city Okay. back in 1970. Okay. If you were here in 1970, yes. Omija wasn't here. Oh, so why we have this thin tunnel? Maybe you would be able to find so many workers looking for coal. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you and Cheng, is that your girlfriend? Oh. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> hello, uh, hello. Thank you for coming. Hello, um, Cheng. Uh, actually, yeah. yeah, her last name is Zhang. Zhang? Uh, oh. And her first name is Yi Wen. Yi Wen. Okay. Hello. Hello, Yi Wen. Ni hao. <laughs> it's good to have you. Um, so her language is heart language. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, her, her language is heart language. We are introducing about uh, Omicha. And actually, I really don't know if there's anyone in Taiwan, if we import it. But if you have a chance, I will bring Omija back to Taiwan for you. Oh, <laughs> you're going to ship back? Yeah, 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 except buy my luggage. Well, I thought you were starting a new business, selling yeah. a visa. <laughs> yeah. Back to your hometown. So back to the past, this tunnel was built for... Coal mines. Oh. So it was about 450 meters deep. Oh, 400 meters deep, okay. In that mountains? And with the Christmas tree? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel something. Yeah, oh, Omija, wait. Wait, um, I saw some contacts. Yeah. They have a is spicy it? flavor. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, hey, come on, bro. So, is it a bit spicy? I'm not sure that spicy they're talking about, but yeah, maybe. Because usually the Omija we taste in Korea is like sweet and a bit sour, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, it could be a very nice flavor to make uh, alcohol. You mean the wine? Wine. Well, I didn't know that Omija can also make yes, actually, also wine. It's good to try with Korean barbecue sometimes. Ooh, if have, you don't like soju. Have you tried before? Once. Mm. I didn't like soju personally, so I, I love it. Okay. Because Omija soju sounded a bit sweeter. Yeah, I think so. And Most of the time, we try Omija with the sweet flavor, right? Right. The taste. And wow. Omija wine, also not too bad. Yeah, I can see. So, whenever you visit this tunnel, you can not only enjoy the original Omija, you uh -huh. can also enjoy the Omija mm -hmm. made us wine. Yes. But they also have the regular grape wine as well, mm -hmm. because this place is the best place to keep the wine. Oh, why? Because it's temperature. <laughs> oh, the temperature, which you, means it's cool. Yeah. Can you guess what temperature would that area will be? Mm, Fifteen to sixteen. <laughs> oh, you know what? That wasn't too natural, but you're right. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Fourteen Celsius degree to sixteen Celsius degree every day. Wow, the like best place to be, especially in the summer. I in guess. summer, you're right. As you can see nowadays, the temperature is twenty-eight Celsius degrees, right? Yeah, it's getting much better than last week. Yeah. Oh, wow. man. Omicha, why? I, I, I really want to get that someday um, in the future. Yeah, I think compared to the normal wine, with the flavor of Omicha, it may taste a bit sweet. I think it, it sweet. will be unique. Will you Very be? unique. Yeah. yeah, it could be strong. Mm -hmm. Well, stronger. they even provide the tables. Yeah. Well. Uh, to experience the wine before you go back. Exactly, especially the temperature is around 15 Celsius degrees. I think oh, it's really right. good. The best temperature to enjoy the wine. Yeah, wow. Uh, I heard they sell the food before the COVID-19. I can see because of the tables, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we could come back here after COVID-19. Exactly. Well, the restaurant is all set up. Have you been to this tunnel before? I've done it once. Oh, so the fan tour. Oh, okay. So did you do anything inside besides drinking the wine? Well, in my memories back then, um, I walk all the way down there. Oh, 400 with, meters? Yeah, uh, 500 meters. 500 meters, okay. Yeah, uh, they show us very nice scenery. Not only this tunnel. Yes. But also one of the eight sceneries no. <laughs> in Mugyeon. Oh, so they also have like eight, one of the eight sceneries in here. Around there. Oh! Wow. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name that eight scenery right away. Okay. Uh, yeah. No worry. I'm not going to ask you this question as well. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, uh, I think it's a bit tough. Because you're not going to remember it. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> it's better to remember Omija. Omija, that is true. 
And do you know what that is? Museum. It's kind of museum, but what kind of exhibitions? To make a wine, to make a omicha. Kind of, but it it was something has to do with artistic. So the art artist came over here to do the painting. Mm, painting is one of the thing they've done. Yes, and also the 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 potteries. Oh, the potteries. It's the Joseon Dynasty pottery. Well, they just put over here. Um, that means they were used to be found. Ah, they were used to be found. Yeah, or there was a place where they used to produce mm-hmm. the Joseon Dynasty style pottery. Yes. M- Name Pecha. Pecha. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference about this pottery and other pottery?s Firstly, it's very white. Oh yeah. It's very white. Yeah, exactly. And there are many decorations. Oh, many decorations. There are many. Oh, there are many. Just purely white. Yeah, because uh, it was the pottery built for Joseon Dynasty Confucianism. Oh. Um, scholars, who loved modesty. Oh. They want they want everything to be simple. Mm. They didn't like anything decorated too much. So that's why the pottery is also designed into white color. Yeah. Mm, that's see. why we call it white saladon. Oh, white saladon. Wow. And there's also some lasers or some lighting shows inside. Sounds like a good place for children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I don't know why they put the dinosaurs over here. But... Uh, maybe they taste like chicken and Korean <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe in the past there's some chicken shop over there. I, I, I heard about it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, it will be a good place to walk around like this all the way uh, down to the coal mines. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit surprising that this place would used to be a coal yeah. mine, like just 40, 50 years ago. I found out that it's really good that seeing Korean make good use of this tunnel into another tourist spot. You mean subway? <laughs> yeah, 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 the subway. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think Korea has so many tunnels, like roughly 3,000, uh, Because you have so many mountains, right? We got so many mountains. And that's why you need the long tunnels, right? I think we've gone through that, right? Mom? Yeah, The exactly. longest tunnels in Korea? How long was it? 11, oh, wait, you're, I think you were going to say it. I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> remember. <laughs> 11 kilometers. Sorry, Mao was sleeping when yeah. you were driving yeah, through that. Yeah, exactly. Tunnel. 11 kilometers. 11, 11 kilometers. That's pretty long. But once we left this tunnel in <laughs> Mungyong, yep. this bridge is one of the eight sceneries Okay, in look, looks like Lego. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I kind of like it, but um, well, I want to play Lego now because of you. Yeah, <laughs> so this is also one of the eight sceneries in yes. Mungyong. This is one of the eight sceneries, the bridge along the street. Is there any name of it? Are you going to remember? Okay, uh. <laughs> Mungyong Bridge. Okay, we'll just let's just name it Moongyeong Bridge. Yeah. But we know it's uh, one of the eight bridge, uh, eight scenery because do you see that wall <laughs> along the mountain? Actually, yeah. What is like it? Like the what castle wall. Yeah. The the castle. Oh, the castle. Yeah, along the mountain side. Mm. There's there's a stone walls there. Can you see it? To be honest, no. Where is it? Like a stone wall. It looks like a. a oh wall. yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it. On the the right edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So oh. Once you cross the bridge, you walk straight, you'll be able to enter the fortress. Oh, so there's a fortress over there? Yeah. Wow. Where you used to protect it, the area. Mm-hmm. So, um, back to the conversation at yeah. uh, the topic of the coal mines. Where after they produce the coal, yes. they have to transport the coal. Yes, to transport the coal. By the train. Okay. But now there's no more coal mines. So? Where's that train go? Museum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, museums, right? Oh, okay. Angela? <laughs> hey, Angela. Hey, hey, Angela. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Oh, you remember Angela? Yeah, well. Yeah, I really have to say thank you to Angela. She always supports us. Yeah, well, it depends. How much money did you pay? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, 20 Singapore dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Angela. I think um, Mao can be a good contributor. <laughs> yeah, this is our last time. Maybe the last time doing the live streaming. So we are happy to have you, Angela, uh, Yongbin, and Iwon. Well, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for coming. And 
Well, uh, thanks for remembering me. Of course, wow. of course, I remember you. I always remember the beauties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. So this is the rail bike. Before it, it was the train railroad that yeah. carries the coal line. Exactly. That, but now it became the rail bike station and the rail bike railway. So where did the train go? Uh, train. You, you don't need train here anymore because you don't need to transport the coal. Okay. So either destroy or put in the museum, right? Yeah. But the point is, this railway bike where that used to carry the coal, ah. it goes through the mountains and tunnels. Wow. And... It's so great to see the beautiful scenery. Exactly. Do you know how long is it? Okay, seven point two kilometers. <laughs> By right riding trip. the bicycle? Hey, don't worry about it. It's like semi manual. Okay, semi man. Oh, semi manual. Yeah, semi manual. So you can still switch to man as uh, switch to automatic. Um, kind of. So you actually wheel your legs, but it's kind of moving much faster than you expected. Okay, so my suggestion is go there with your friends so that you can take turns doing this. Yeah, well, you know, uh, just go there after a meal. Uh, just think of it as your exercise. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so far that we just explained about, introduced about the paragliding and the zip line, and we come to rail bike. Yeah, here we go. Wow. And look at that farm <laughs> alongside. You know what's popular in Mungyong? Rice. Oh, come on. You make rice wine in Mungyong? Ah, come on, I don't know. Do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what's famous? Mountains? Oh, well, I think we talked about it before. Omicha? Ah, there we go. Oh, they are famous for making omicha. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, Ooh. they produce it. And also apples. Oh, as oh, yeah. Mungyong apples. Mungyong apples are also Ooh. getting popular. Mm. Yes. So there could be... Rice is like very common uh, agriculture yeah, product exactly. in Korea. So, uh, but it's also good that are produced from Mungyong. So, <laughs> yeah, apple. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the apple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, so may I know what's the difference from the apples in Mungkyong and other places? Uh, firstly, you cannot grow apples in the northern regions. Oh yeah, yeah. I seldom heard that like, Korean apples. <laughs> <laughs> The apple history here actually started by one American missionary. Okay. Um, he misses apple pie back home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he planted apple trees? In early 20th century. Uh, in Mungkyong? Actually, it was Daegu. Oh, Daegu. Okay. Daegu was the perfect region because there were too many mountains too. Yes. Um, it was hot. It was perfect weather to grow apples. Mm. But back then, Mungkyong was too cold. Ah. But since this climate changes, yeah, yeah. Global Mugyo warming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what's a famous fruit in Korea if I want to try it before leaving Korea? Sorry, the famous apple? The famous fruits. Um, I think you already named it at co like 100 times when we met each other. Strawberry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. The strawberry is super good. But how about this month? Like September, October? Okay, honestly, September, I think it's the season for persimmon. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, in Korean, we call it kam. Kam. Okay. It, it's orange color, but it's not really orange. So it's like orange? Not really, but... Smaller orange? Persimmon, I think there will be it's a similar type of food in, in Taiwan too. Hopefully. Oh, okay. Okay. I yeah. will go back and check, take a look. Yeah, but it's sweet. Oh, it's sweet. Sweet. But... Not like orange flavor. Okay. Yeah. It's Looks like orange, but not like orange flavor. Not orange flavor. Okay. It's very soft too. You, you see, if you go by yourself, you have to finish <laughs> the seven point two kilometers. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought Justin was dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I think he took turns with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, in invisible camera. Invisible camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary, actually. Yeah. Wow. So okay. Well. So here we go. This was the end of the video clips. Yeah, time on. really flies. Well, well, yeah, time flies because uh, already two months passed. Exactly. Yeah, well, since we start talking about um, Andong Adon. and Gangneung, Pyeongchang, yeah, Gyeongju, yes, and finally the Mungyong. Yes, and I think as for Mungyong is really different from other places that we have introduced before. 
How different? Outdoor activities. As you yes. can see, we talk about the paragliding, the zip line, the real bike. It all needs your courage. Yeah. <laughs> As Joe just stated, real bike is so cool. Real bike so cool, exactly. <laughs> I think that's what he stated. Oh, that's his Korean name. Yes. Now I realize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I was uh, not supposed to leak this story. Okay. But, uh, okay. Got it. Got it. <laughs> but like I, like uh, like Mao, you mentioned, it's a it's the best place to experience the outdoor activities. Exactly. Um, with the TK travel, you actually can have an opportunity. Uh, to go Munjong with all this experience that we actually ever stated before. Especially if we have such a good tour guide like Justin. Yeah, hopefully you speak English though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. Yeah. Um, so just let's talk about all those uh, the cycles, the tour that we're going to talk about. You the mean the related. itinerary? The tour, yeah, the tour itinerary. Okay. So we start and meet at the Hongda station around the yes. time and uh, we start and experience the paragliding first. Yes. And lunch for Burgogi. Oh. Do you know what Burgogi is? Grilled <laughs> pork. <laughs> pork or beef? It could be pork, it could be beef. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 just the meat. But Bur standard one is beef. Oh, great. Oh, and it may be really yeah. hungry. Well, 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 I thought we had dinner just a few hours ago, yeah, but exactly. yeah, that makes us hungry again. So, wow, you, as you can see, so you depart from Seoul and you can enjoy the paragliding, the, and, and the lunch, the zip line and lunch, oh, and that's the, really the station sightseeing with the, 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 the bike and all that. Wow. Yeah, that will make you exciting enough to experience the city Mungyong and hopefully you're going to hear the good news too as well. Yeah, exactly. Everyone, don't forget. Moonkyong means to hear something good and we also wish that after coming here not only hearing but also we can make your dream come true yeah and if you want to see the Moonkyong yes uh, from Korean drama find the kingdoms on Netflix I think <laughs> the kingdoms means South okay sorry I don't know in Chinese but that's uh, really yeah good. yeah I, I heard that there's a Netflix Taiwanese version for Ex the kingdom series exactly yeah. And I still want to say that according to the itinerary, we are going to provide you with the most difficult courses as for the zip line, right? <laughs> That's true. Um, but I strongly recommend it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Even though you think it's going to be scary. Yeah. It's safe. Yeah, it's pretty safe, seriously. Just to just show us how safe it is. <laughs> and you are not going to feel too much shaky. It's not going to be like this shaky at all. Yeah. It, you're gonna stay like stunned and far. Yeah. Because and the lines are stuck. Yes, exactly. And maybe as for some people, the paragliding is a bit scary. But mm -hmm. as you can see, IU even did it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a very what strong man, Mao. Oh yeah. I would be strong whenever I meet her. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, something like that one. So yeah, I think we have introduced four places, right? Andong Gangneung, Gangneung, Pyeongchang, Pyeongchang, Gyeongju, Gyeongju, and oh. Mungkyeong. <laughs> yeah, Mungkyeong. So yeah, we've been talking about the entire fifth places so far. Exactly. I heard they have a next agenda to make another online tour, but that will be in Mandarin Chinese, I think. Oh, we see it. Angela, thank you. Kingdom is. Shizhan Chao Xian. Oh, <laughs> wow, you're still here. Oh, thank you hey, so thank much. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much. Okay, I guess you watched it before, I guess. Angela, have you seen this? I'm not, I don't want to leak this story, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leak this story, just... Um... So I think, yeah, no matter, like, the places we have introduced, and we strongly recommend you because it's, like, totally different from each other. The Blossom, Cherry Blossom. The history part, the culture part, or even the outdoor activities, they are all really amazing. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to leak this story because uh, oh, Angela yeah. had okay, seen Okay, Angela, it. go Wikipedia, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, hope you're gonna enjoy the show, Angela, if you love zombies. Yes. Just in case. Well, if you don't like it, it's not going to be <laughs> yeah, exactly. entertaining. And we are also appreciate that, Angela, you almost show up every single live streaming show. Really appreciate it. Angela should be the one who should be here for free tour. Yeah, someday. exactly. <laughs> okay. 
So, although there is no upcoming live streaming tours, but I have to say thank you to Justin. No, thank you, Mao, for doing great tours for the last two months yeah, all together. Exactly. And thank you for those who watch this live streaming. Without <laughs> leaving a comment, we still know that you support us. So it's really appreciated. Yeah, I mean, um, especially Angela, thank you for uh, participating in this online show yeah. with me. And um, like, seriously, um, if you ever visit Korea, um, just you can contact me. Just find me. Yeah. Up. Justin has amazing English. Yeah, he's not Korean actually. Oh well, uh, <laughs> don't tell them I'm from North. Okay, he's just from just North kidding. actually. <laughs> just kidding. I just hairstyle. Oh, uh, just like hairstyle. Okay, got it. Well, no, don't worry. I'm not really from that area. But um, <laughs> just you can find me on Instagram, Korea zero nine one zero. Yeah, just yeah. You can ask me any questions about Korea. Yeah. Any tour. Yeah, you can add me. Exactly, yeah. and you can also add our TK Travel Korea, and we really appreciate your join, your participate. Yes, TK Travel will provide the very nicer tour information that we could ever seen. Yes, and I think since it's time, we have to do our very last closing, <laughs> which was created by Mao. Yeah, which was created by us. Okay. <laughs> All right, Justin, are you ready? Let's do this. I'm Mao. I'm Justin. And we are MJ. Sarangheyo. Sarangheyo. Thank you. That was a nice choice. <laughs>